All right, class, so today we are focusing on how readers solve unknown words in a variety of ways or a variety of strategies. So as we go through this mini lesson, think of what you do as a reader when you run into a word that maybe you don't know. There's a variety of different things that you may have been taught throughout your time in school. I mean, you are fifth graders, you've been in this for a while now, so no doubt you've learned some strategies along the way. So think about those things as we go through the lesson. So here are some ways, or some questions I should say, that point us to strategies that maybe you have used before in the past. So for example, do you know other words that start with the same letter or letters. So you know how sometimes letters, when they are combined together, they create a certain sound, like S-C-H, and they, right? School. So you have that sound that is created when you have those together. O-O put together makes oo, right? So you have certain understandings of how letters, when they are combined together, they make certain sounds. So maybe you've seen that in another word and you can use what you understand from the previous word to help try to figure out what this word might say. Some other things you could think about are, do you know words that have the same middle part? So again, just like how this one's looking at the beginning, you could be also looking at the middle to see what's going on there. Do you divide the word into syllables? So this can also be considered chunking. So you chunk the word out take pieces of it and you sound out as you go along. So how can I, before I go on to the next one, how can I find the syllables of a word? How do I find the syllables of a word, Leslie? I mean, you kind of bring it up, bring it up, like you take the first of three or four letters and then you split them in half from the other two. Okay. But some words only are one syllable. So how do I know which words are two syllables, three syllables, one syllable? How do I know? Miller? Yes, as you're saying the word, you can notice how many syllables are in the word by how you say it. When every time your mouth moves down here, you can count that as one. What else can you do, Amelia? Okay, you can, you can look at it that way too. What's another way, Daniel? Yeah, you could clap out a word too. So that is typically the most popular one, right? Where people just try to clap out the word. So like adventure, adventure, adventure. So that must be three syllables, right? Or you could go adventure. Maybe you'll come up with it as we move along the lesson. Just let me know, okay? If you're able to think of it later on. All right, another thing you can do is, do you think about what makes sense based on the other words in the sentence? So this is looking for context, context cues. So you start reading the rest of the sentence and you say, okay, I think it's this, this is how the word is said, but does that make sense? with what is being said in the sentence? Or does that make, does that fit, right? We're trying to think about, um, does that sound like a word that I've heard before in a sentence like that? The last thing is, can you shorten the word by removing parts? So it's kind of like looking at something again, right? So we're gonna go ahead and list off some things now. And you might not be able to see it, but they listed some ideas right there. What are some strategies that you use when it comes to solving an unknown word? 
so there's a word, you don't know what it is, what are some of the first things you try to do? Wesley? Sound it out. Okay, yeah, and we have sound it out right here. Another thing you can do, Amelia. Look it up in the dictionary. Yeah, look it up in the dictionary. The dictionary will show you how to break apart the word. It'll give you a definition for it. Some dictionaries will even give you an example of the word in a sentence. So that would be an excellent idea, which we have dictionary right down here. You can barely see it, but they have dictionary right there. What else? What are some other strategies? Asking yeah, so you can ask a teacher, maybe you are at home, you can ask an adult, and they may know the word already, okay? And then they can explain it to you. Anything else? Yeah. Break up the yep, so like we were talking about before, does it make sense in the sentence? That is a meaning. So depending on what the sentence is talking about, you might be able to figure out what the word is. Some words, and this is kind of like what they talked about, what was talked about in the last slide, where you take the word apart. Some words are actually just two words in one, right? And so if you look at it close enough, you can just take that word, right, and put the two words together to come up with what the final word is. So I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head for this for some reason it's not coming. Does anyone have an example of two words being put together? And Zoe? Power. There you go. So, for example, let's use that. I'm going to write it out in print for right now. So, here we got two words put together. All right. Wait. So, if you ran into that word, you didn't know how to say it, but you know how to say the simpler words, the word high and the word way, you just go, oh, okay. I'll just chunk that out and put those together. Amelia? Okay. Yeah, carpool. Yeah, carpool. If we're gonna stick with the theme of roads and transportation, that would be one. What else? Takes? Oh, mailbox. Okay, a mailbox. Yep, that would be another one. So we got the word mail and box put together. Brecken. Airplane. Airplane's another one. And then Wesley, you had something you wanted to share. Uh, superhero? Okay, yep, that one works too. All right. And then there's one more way of thinking about this. So sticking with this idea, we know there are base words, right? And then we can attach parts, suffixes to the end of words, right? We can attach them to the end. So like, for example, the past tense of walk. What is the past tense of walk? Daniel. Walk, right? So in that example, we look and we see, okay, I know the word walk, and then ED is walking, right? and you just put those together. Now, that's a very simple example, right? Everyone here probably knows that word. But when you get to the more difficult words, you have a test on it to make it as long as you understand that strategy. Is there any other strategies that we want to share before we go into our reading today? Any more strategies we can think of as we're looking at unknown words? Marcos? Um. Or you could read, you could read out your sentence, say like, for example, you heard a word that you never heard about, and so you can find, you can find reading that sentence, or, yeah, you can find reading your sentence, and you can put those, like, what you were saying. Yeah, so, yeah, context yeah. clues. Yep, we're looking, you can look for context clues. So, if you don't know the word, you can skip over it really quickly, go through the rest of the sentence, then go back, that's important, to go back and then see what the word might be. You can't just blow through it, right? You gotta go back and see. Yes, Amelia. For example, I can 
Yep, so it's like chunking, right? Or sounding it out a little at a time. You just kind of look at, like you said, these letters put together usually make this sound, right? And then these letters put together usually make this sound. So it's these certain blends or these certain combinations. And then you try to sound it out that way. That's the most common strategy, which you can do with syllables, right? Which we talked about before. Yes, Marcia. Isn't holiday also a compound word? when you go through your book. If you run into a word, don't just pass over it and continue on going and pretend it never happened. Instead, use the strategies we talked about. Use the strategies you've learned throughout all your years of being in school. You've learned many different strategies. In fact, you've shared so many of them just right now in just a few minutes that we've been talking. All right, so make sure that as you're going through your book, that you stop and use those, all right? So what I'm gonna have you do is, today I want you to, you're gonna go through another comma worksheet, since we've got the little theme right now when it comes to grammar is using commas. Be sure that as you're doing that, look at the example. They give you good examples and directions on how to do it, so make sure you're reading through that carefully, because I know some of you guys, eh, you're still, you might need some practice with some of these commas, so make sure you're being careful and diligent as you're going through that. So, it'll be a grammar worksheet. The other thing I want you to do is you're going to list strategies that you use, okay? I don't want us to just pretend just you know, go through this as a little seven minute thing and then we don't talk about strategies anymore and we don't use them. So I want you to list strategies that you use in your mini lesson response. That's tab two, right? So I, I should have see some lists in tab two I go through them. So you're going to list strategies. You said sound it out, ask for help, use context clues, all those things that you talked about. And then we're going to read independently. Any questions? your minutes from yesterday into the reading log that should have been done at the at Sunday. Had, did you uh, did you log in your minutes for this last week? Okay. Well, you'll wait until probably the weekend to do this upcoming week. All right. So right now, no, you don't need to log them. You just focus on these tasks. All right, Wesley. Do you? And then we're done. We're going to start. Do reading here count our minutes? No. Okay. You need to read at home. Okay, so um, that's just that. And I thought, oh wait, maybe I have to do it here. Yeah, no, you can't you can't just count it here. It has to be at home. Because we have you once we get these reading groups going, you're gonna be reading your reading group book in here and stuff like that. And you'll be seeing more of your library book reading at home. Okay? So that's why. So yeah, no. Your minutes here do not count. This is school time. All right, let's go ahead and start. Go ahead and get your materials. Yes, Kate. Okay. 